Prove if theta is the angle between vectors a and b, where theta is between 0, theta, and pi, then the magnitude of the cross product is the same as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the sine of theta. So what we're saying is the magnitude of the cross product will find the area of a parallelogram formed by two vectors in 3D space. Okay, this proof is quite long and quite complicated and is not expected uh, in exam conditions. So if we let a be vector a be x1 i plus y1 j plus z1 k and vector b being x2 i y2 j z2 k then if we find the scalar product, uh, the vector, the cross product, sorry, if we form the um, determinant matrix i j k and then write down x1 y1 z1 and then write down x2, y2, z2. And then remember, you cover this one up and find the determinant what's left. So you get y1, z2, minus z1, y2, lots of i. So always minus the next one. So you cover up this one, you're going to get x1, z2, minus z1, x2, j. And then the last one, you're going to get x1, y2, minus y1, x2, k. Right, now I want to find the magnitude squared of this. So it's going to be this squared plus all this squared plus all this squared. So it's going to be this squared. Plus this squared. Now this minus square sign when you square it will just become positive. So it becomes uh, x1, z2, z1, x2 all squared. Plus y1, y2 minus y1 x2 all squared. Now expanding each of these using a plus b all squared or a minus b all squared you're going to get y squared z squared minus 2 lots of y1 z2 z1 y2 plus z1 y2. Doing the same to this you're going to get this and doing the same to this you're going to get this. So what we're doing is uh, uh, a minus b all squared is a squared minus 2ab minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, writing that out again on this page here. And then we're going to call this uh, number one, equation number one. Okay, so this is called number one. So this is the cross product, the magnitude of the cross product squared. Now, I'm going to now work out the magnitude of a squared times uh, dot uh, times the magnitude of b squared. So that's going to be x1 squared, y1 squared, z1 squared. Now normally we have the square root in, but I just want the magnitude squared times x2 squared, y2 squared times z2 squared. So now I'm going to do x times that bracket. And then I'm going to do, sorry, x1 squared times that bracket. Now I'm going to do y1 squared times this bracket. And finally, z1 squared times this bracket here. Expanding each of these things, I'm going to get x1 squared, uh, x2 squared, plus x1 squared, y2 squared, plus x1 squared, z2 squared. Then I'm going to get y1 squared z x2 squared plus y1 squared y2 squared y1 squared z2 squared. And finally I'm going to get z1 squared x2 squared plus z1 squared y2 squared plus z1 squared plus z2 squared. And I'm going to call this equation 2. Now what I'm going to do is work out a dot b first and then do the... Um, square it. So that's going to be x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2 plus z1 times z2 squared. And now I'm going to have to do x1, x2 times this bracket because I'm squaring it. And then y1, y2 times this bracket here again because I'm squaring it. And then z1, z2 times this bracket here. Right, expanding this, this times th this times this, and x1 or x2 times this one and this one, you're going to end up with x1 squared 
x2 squared, x1, x2, y1, y2 plus x1, x2, z1, z2. Doing a similar process as this one times this one, you're going to end up with this. And this one times this one, you're going to end up with this. Putting the squared terms at the front, so we've got x1, x2, x1 squared, y x2 squared, y1 squared, y2 squared, z1 squared. And then all the other terms here. Okay, I'm going to call this 3. Right, now what we're going to do, if we do the magnitude of a squared times the magnitude of b squared minus the scalar product of a, b squared, then that's going to be 2 take away 3. So that's going to be, this is all of 2 from before. And th th now we're going to take away all of Three, uh, all of three, putting, making sure that we put brackets in. Now we can do a little bit of cancelling because you might have noticed that this, when we take the bracket in, this will cancel. So that will cancel with this, and this one will cancel with this one, and this one will cancel with this one. And having done that, we actually will end up with this. And this happens to be the magnitude of the cross product squared, which is actually equation one. So by doing this process, do I this, take away this, actually gives me the magnitude of the cross product squared. So we end up with a relationship showing that the magnitude of the cross product squared is the magnitude of a squared, the magnitude of b squared minus the dot product or the scalar product of a dot b squared. Right, so now, we, now we've proved this relationship, we're now going to work with this in order to uh, prove our final, final thing that we tried to do at the beginning. So, writing that out again, it actually now becomes quite easy. So we've got the magnitude of a squared, the magnitude of b squared, now the scalar product is magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cos of the angle. So all of this has to be squared. The squared side can come into the bracket. This is the scalar product. So we've got the magnitude of A squared, magnitude of B squared, minus the magnitude of A squared, minus the magnitude of B squared, cos squared theta. Now here we've got a common factor of magnitude of A squared times the magnitude of B squared. So I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to be left with 1 minus cos squared theta. And we know that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. So we're going to have the magnitude of a squared, the magnitude of b squared, times sine squared theta. And taking the square root, and that's because sine theta is actually greater than 0 between uh, theta being between 0 and pi. And that's the widest that the two vectors, original vectors a and b, can be opened. We're going to get hence that that the vector cross product, magnitude of the cross product, is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta for sine theta greater than zero for theta greater or equal, uh, theta greater than zero but less than pi. If we just draw a little diagram of what we mean, okay, so this is A, vector A, this is vector B, this is the angle between the two vectors, the greatest of the angle could ever be would be pi, and then sine is always positive for pi, and the cross product A is the vector perpendicular to both A and B. Okay, so hence we've just proved that the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B sine theta.